There's little sense in wasting resources calculating items that aren't seen in the final render. So you can use three easy techniques to use, reduce the number and the complexity of objects scattered uh, by Forest Pack. First of all, you can use camera culling to remove items that aren't visible in the camera view. Secondly, you can thin out the scatter based on their distance from the camera. And thirdly, you can use forest level of detail to change the complexity of the model and the textures based on the distance from the camera. So in this scene, we're just looking at optimizing the grass that we scattered earlier in a previous video. Remember, we're using patches, so already the number of scattered items is lower than it would be where we scattering individual plants. Currently, we're scattering 35,260 patches. If we just find the camera in the scene explorer and turn it on, we can see where it sits. That, what that means is there's an awful lot of grass which is behind the camera that's still being thought about. What we should do is remove those plants since they're not visible anyway. So the way to do that is to use camera culling. So go to your forest calc object and open the camera rollout. Click on the camera picker and pick the camera from the view. Alternatively, you can turn on auto assign to active view, which will automatically switch the camera depending on which one you're currently looking through. Then turn on limit to visibility. When you turn this on, all of the objects outside of the camera's view will be removed. And you can see we've reduced the number of rendered items now to just over 10,000, a massive reduction. The second technique is to reduce the density of plants based on their distance from the camera. The principle being that maybe you don't need to see so many grass patches in you know, several hundred meters from the camera, you won't really perceive the difference. So to use this, you turn on the density button, just click the checkbox to turn this on, and then you use the curve to control the density based over distance. So the x-axis represents the distance from the camera to the furthest reaches of this effect. And these are defined by the minimum and the maximum values shown in the distance fall off group. On the Y axis, you have the density. So this graph is showing you that the density at the minimum value close to the camera is 100% and at the maximum distance, it drops down to 0%, so it will fade out to nothing. And in fact, if I control the max value, if I drag this in a little bit, you can see that effect a little bit more clearly. You can also change the minimum value, of course, so that the effect doesn't start for some distance, which is useful when you've got a simple linear curve like we have here to make sure that the density remains at, f at full power for a good period until it starts falling off. So now we are going to fall off only after the second house. Here are the same techniques applied to the trees. So we start with 23,000 and we'll pick the camera from the scene and turn on limit visibility and it's down to 21,000. We can also, of course, limit the density based on distance since these go hundreds of meters into the background. So by turning on the distance fall off and then adjusting the max value, we're able to get this count down significantly. It's now down to 11,412 objects. That's nearly cut the value in half. And as you can see from the camera view, it's barely perceptible. Also, another trick, if you increase the scale ever so slightly the further it is from the camera, it compensates for the lack of trees and isn't really visible in the renders. Finally, we can use level of detail to optimize the renders further. In this example, I'm just going to use one tree just to illustrate. This one tree is added to the level of detail forest pack object, and I'm going to add it three times because all I'm going to change here is the materials. You often see better performance gains by changing the materials than you do the geometry. And then I have multiple versions of the material itself. So, so I've got the full quality material with normal maps, with opacity maps, with double sided materials and everything else. And then I've got a mid quality material which retrain, retains the two sided material but no longer has normal or bump map since you'd never see them in the mid ground anyway. Then I have a low quality material which removes the two sided shaders and strips everything down to its complete bare essentials which will only ever be seen in the distance. So you really won't notice those, those missing details. So I'm just going to assign these materials to each of the three um, LOD levels that we've added to this forest LOD object from top to bottom, best to worst. 
and then I'm going to change the distances from the camera that these are triggered. So max distance is the point at which this particular LOD object comes on. So I've got 33. Basically, I'm dividing the distance into thirds. So the good quality materials will apply in the first third. The second quality materials will apply in the second third after 33%. And finally, the poor quality materials will be after 66%. So in the third third. Just for the viewports to make things clear about which material is being used, I've just changed the diffuse colour to green for the good quality material, amber for the medium quality material, and red for the low quality material. So now if we come back to the forest object, we can see how this looks. So first of all, I'm going to add the forest LOD object to the geometry rollout. So now that's just there, and you can see already I've got the green quality material, the good quality material on the foreground, the medium quality material on the midground and the low quality material in the background as denoted by the green amber and red colors you can turn off level of detail effects directly from the host forest pack object just by turning it on from the level of detail group in the camera rollout and you can also override the maximum distance from here too so you can use this maximum distance spinner here to control the value Another thing, if I go back to the LOD object, you can see at the moment the breaks between the three detail levels uh, are a hard line. So that might be in the foreground. That might make it easier to spot the changes between one shader or one geometry object and the next. So in the forest LOD object, there is a setting that can help to disguise that, which is the variation parameter at the bottom of the rollout. So just by increasing this value, you can kind of dissolve between them. What it just creates a bit of noise uh, or probability ramp, I guess, between one level of detail and the next. So we've now got a much more highly optimized scene with three different qualities of material which get progressively lower the further they are from the camera. We've um, limited the trees to what's only inside the camera view and we've thinned out the density based on the distance from the camera too which has resulted in the render items coming down to 11,408 objects, substantially lower than we started with. The nice thing about these settings too is that they also work with animated cameras so if you have a fly through like this you can see that the trees are dynamically culled as the camera moves, which works great. But what about if this camera in the center here is being used to render out a VR scene? In that case, it needs to render the full 360 degree environment. In that case, this clipping mode, this camera clipping mode can't really help you because you need to see all around. You can still optimize the VR scene by using the two other tricks, the ability to thin out the density based on distance and the ability to use level of detail objects. So here's how that works. If we go back to our tree and enable a level of detail object, which you can see is showing in red, and then I'll just come in and change the output size to a VR compatible output size, and then go into camera mode. I've still got a camera assigned, and I still want to leave it assigned, but what I want to do is to turn off limit visibility. So that means the camera's still there and Forest Pack knows about it and can make calculations based on it, but it's not actually clipping the scatter itself. But what I can still use is level of detail. So if I just turn this on, you can see now I've got my level of detail work based on the camera point of view. I should point out in this example, I have foolishly got the colors reversed. So the red is now the good quality, the amber is medium still, and the green is the poor quality. So a no big deal, but you can see the level of detail effect in action. You can also use distance fall off, of course. So here I've got the same tricks before as we used with the trees. I have a camera density fall off, which is getting gradually thinner the further it is from the camera. And then I've got the scale going slightly up to compensate for the, the fewer trees that you see on the horizon. And then, so just to see how much effect this has, let's bring up the forest stats. So we start with the render items of 290,240 trees. And if I turn on density and scale fall off, I brought this down to 130,992 trees. And you can of course fiddle with the minimum and the maximum values to get different results here and try and reduce the count of trees even further. So just by reducing the max value a little bit, I've got 95,520 trees, which is significantly fewer than we had at the start.
And if we were to create a test render of this, you'll see that although it looks very clear in the viewports what's happened, it's, it's not at all easy to spot that density-based falloff in the actual render.